All right, my guy, I'm giving you my grips. I give nobody my grips, bro. I, I know. I flashed my grips one time, and they weren't even my real grips, bro, like a while ago in a playoff screen. And, like, they got – but I, I never give my grips. But let's do this. All right, let's go. All right. Uh, what are we going with first? You call it. Laura, let's go uh, sinker because I've been trying to get you to share that for a while. All right. So before I get into grips, man, I'm going to be straight up because I know there's going to be young – young pitchers watching this man and young wave like i truly believe grips pitching mechanics i i truly believe it's all individual and unique to the individual yes it's easy you could go play with grips all the time if someone shows you a grip go play with it but when you play with it don't be so prone to keeping that exact grip this is what i try to tell people like all my like, i hold the ball weird just because naturally in my hand that's more comfortable like i'm going to show you but my grip is not going to work for probably most people. There might be a few guys out there who it might work for, but the way I hold the ball, it's like insane. And it's something that I had to find for myself. Um, because I used to try to throw a sinker in a two seam my entire life and had nothing, no type of action. I used to cut. And it's something that I found after I was already in the big leagues playing with the ball on the couch. It just felt so comfortable. I felt it on the two seam. I said, all right, I'm going to go play catch with it. Play catch with it threw a bullpen with it in the same week it was in the game the next time like i'm someone who i'll put a new pitch in a game literally like if i learned a pitch the day before i'll put it in the game the next day <laughs> like i don't care but let's do this Thank all, you. Right. all right let me put this phone up real quick okay okay so sinker man i essentially can throw a slider from my sinker grip and i have before i've been like mid delivery before it. i've had a, i've been mid delivery before I work quick sometimes. I've been mid-delivery and have already, like, started my delivery and lifted my leg. And I had a sinker grip, and the catcher threw down slider, and I've thrown it off of it. So this is the grip. I'm, like, very torqued. So I'm across the ball. Like, a normal – so if you look at my thumb, like, a normal person for sinker or something like, is like this, like, straight up on the two seam. I take the ball, and I torque it this way so it's essentially a, almost a one seam i'm throwing it's coming off my my off the outside of my middle finger so when i release the ball it's it's essentially it's not even a singer like on, on the rap soto like it's crazy man it comes up as like a reverse sli like it comes up as like reverse slider or like something crazy the way it didn't spins. i call it i think i called it that so, yep yeah yeah exactly because it doesn't spin like my shit like doesn't spin like it's weird man it's weird how it spins so, like I was saying, like, all my pitches I throw, whereas pitchers mostly are, like, straight up, I take all my pitches and I, I move the ball like that. Even my – it's like this is a normal slider grip. I take it and I, and I torque it. And every pitch I throw, like, this is my sinker. So, if you look, this is my thumb placement. This is my sinker. Every pitch I throw is pretty, like, tight, tight in my hand. Like, I don't hold anything pretty loose. So, yeah, man. You got a little so it's space like, there, too, between your fingers? Say that again? A little space between your fingers? Yeah, so it's weird. If you look, they touch at the top, but there's a space, like, in between. This is what I'm saying. Like, this is hard for people's like, fingers to even get in this position. Like, they touch at the top, but naturally – I'm not even trying to do that, but naturally, there's just, like, a little space. And honestly, I don't think – this is a grip pitch, man. I don't think about trying to do anything. I don't think about trying to pronate. I don't think about trying to make it sink, which is gratifying. This is a pitch I grip, and I just throw it, man, and it's got – great like great action every time man great action. Yeah, it's it, it broke my brain trying to figure out what you did because i slowed it down and i'm seeing the spin it, i'm like that doesn't look like a sinker it comes off literally like can you see that yeah uh -huh. like that outside of my middle finger so it's essentially almost a one scene the way it almost comes off yeah that's yeah. sick <laughs> but I, so, so to echo what you said, just like people's mentalities are different and mechanics are different. It's just, I mean, your, your arm slots different. Your fingers are different. Your finger shapes are different. Yep. Exactly. So I tried throwing a normal sinker. I used to, I tried a million grips for sinkers and two seams. None of them worked for me until I found one when I was playing the ball on my couch that was like, I'm a big comfort guy too. Any pitch I throw, it's got to feel before I throw it, it's got to feel comfortable in my hand. It's got to feel like so comfortable. Like it's got to feel like it's one with my, with my hand and my fingers. I'm never going to throw a pitch that doesn't feel comfortable. You know what I mean? That doesn't feel, even if it's like a nasty grip or it's got great action, 
if it doesn't feel comfortable in my hand and in my fingers, I'm not going to, I'm not going to throw it. So the sinker was something I found just playing with the ball, playing with the seams. I like gripped it like that. I was like, wow, that feels really comfortable. I feel like that's going to come off of that scene. And literally Deanna Navarro at the time put it into the game. He put it into the game that like three nights after I learned it, I threw a bullpen with it like one or two times. I threw it to him in a pregame. I was like, I literally said to him, I was like, like, this is before I'm pitching in a game. It was against the Rangers in 2016. Um, was it 2016? Who knows when it was? It's hard to remember. <laughs> we'll have to go back about I, it. Back then. I literally learned this pitch. So I, I came in the league as a four-seam guy. I didn't have a singer at all. Like, when I came in the league, and I had good success. I had 120 innings my first year as a rookie. I had, like, a 3-5, three, 3-6. Three, I had a 3-6. That was all four-seam slur, not a single sinker. So – I didn't pick the singer up until I was in the big leagues. And it was so good that that became a pitch that I only threw. And I kind of, it, it was such a good pitch. I forgot about my four seam, but my four seam has elite spin, like, which I've learned to kind of get back. That's why I'm excited to add that in this year. So um, my sinker, I literally was playing on the couch in between starts. One start, I was a four seam guy, found it. I always wanted a singer literally next day, play catch with it, threw a bullpen, had crazy action. Deanna Navarro didn't catch my bullpen, so he never saw it. So game, so the game comes up. He's catching me before the game. I literally throw on my repertoire. I'm like, dog, I'm like, I've kind of been working on this. Here's a singer. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I, was, I literally said to him, I was like, don't, don't call him in the game, but just so you see it. He's like, all right, throw it. Fucking threw it. Nasty. He's like, bro. Dude, first in the game, I was like, dude, let's not go. Like, I want to have a learn four. Sixth inning. You can look this up. Sixth inning. Sixth inning comes. I'm, I'm, I'm pitching pretty well. Runner on second, 0-0 zero, zero game. Shin Shu Chu at the dish. This moment I will never forget. This was like the, the break out of my singer. Shin Shu Chu at the dish, 3-2 count. Deanna Navarro calls a sinker. I've never thrown a sinker. <laughs> <laughs> I've never thrown a sinker in a game. I just found the pitch, the grip, literally three days ago. Like, no joke. Found it three days ago in my hotel room. Found it. This guy, and if you look, there's video. I have video from it. I hope I can find it with you. This guy throws it down. Sinker. I didn't even know the sign. He did this. I literally look. He's like, that's full sinker. I literally look. I'm like, I'm staring. I'm like, there's no way he just called this. He literally throws his hands up. He's like, throw it. He throws his hands up. Throw it. I'm like, you know what? All right. Bro, I throw this pitch, and when I tell you it started, I couldn't have thrown a more perfect first pitch sinker for time being. For this is what like kind of propelled me. I got a take from Shin Chu. You know Shin Chu is one of the hardest hitters to take off to to strike out and to get a take on a three two count. I got a take from Shin Chu on a three two count with a runner on second base. He didn't even argue he put his head down and walked right back to the <laughs> walk right back to the dugout and i was like oh like inside i was like oh my god i was like i was like we got some, we got something here <laughs> but so diana navarro man like i always tell that story because he gave me the confidence man he called it literally told him not to call it in the game not only in a game the first time calling it in that situation so it's like that propelled me, man. Like, I threw that pitch and saw the action, and I knew to get a take by Shinshu, by Shinshu Chu on a 3-2 count with a runner on, like, that action had to be crazy. And it was a pitch he completely had out of his head. So it was like, that kind of propelled me, man. And, and finding my sinker, man, I ended up throwing that pitch for the next four, four years, and I forgot about my force. <laughs> I forgot about my force. <laughs> so I'm excited, man. Um, this year I'm going to be incorporating a four seam and a little split, so I can't wait. Yeah, I want to see that split because you and I have been working on that change up for a long time. Yeah, man, we have, bro. we have, <laughs> man. Always asking you for every grip of everybody. Like, how does he throw it? Does he break it down? Videos, YouTube. But Giselleman, man. So, like I said, I've always been someone who I've held the ball on the inside part of the scene. Sinker. I used to try change ups on the inside part. Giselleman throws his on the outside. So I was in, I was down there going through when I was with my calf tear. We were just like talking, going over stuff. Man, first one I threw nasty. I literally just moved my 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 ring finger from the inside of the scene to the outside 
on this side. So now essentially, instead of letting, instead of throwing it where it's coming off like my stinker, the one scene, I'm throwing it, I'm throwing it where it's coming off the outside and I'm rolling like the inside of my finger on that scene, but it gives me a grip to roll on. Whereas I felt like I was rolling away from it. Now I feel like I'm almost pulling, man, this thing when I throw it right, man. So now it's rolling off like, like, like this. Rather, so, rather than rolling off like this, where it kind of runs from you. Now it's like pulling it down. So you always had a hard time pronating, right? So this is actually, you're doing it with your fingers instead of actually pronating through it. Because I don't think pronate, man. A lot of guys, they see my sink and they're like, oh, he probably thinks pronate. Like, I have my grip guy. I let the grip do it. Like, I don't want to think, oh, I need to get out front and turn it over. Like, I just want a grip where it feels comfortable, where I'm going to go through my mechanics, I'm going to release the ball, and it's going to do what it does. Like, I don't want to have to worry at the very end of my delivery when everything else has gone perfect. Now I got to, you know what I mean? I've never been yeah. that guy. Finding this grip, man, like I said, it's going to be a big pitch for me. And, and even when it's not good, it plays as like a, a sinker almost. Like, it still, it still plays. So well, let's get to the slider and the cutter. Um, yep. So slider... I throw a spike slider, man. So my slider is right here. It's almost like people throw curveballs from here. Honestly, I don't think my slider, I think curveball on my slider. Like so you're getting the to the front of it? Like I'm throwing it like this, like kind of over it. And when I really want to make it big, I'll even think like I'm almost trying to roll it this way. Then when I want to make it smaller and shorter and harder, I'll get more fastball and just kind of get on it like this. But when – if I start going like this, it starts getting slurvier and slurvier and slurvier. And then when I get on it more, it's just more, choop, more down. When I get on it, it'll be like 87, 88, 89. Slurvy will be like 84, 85. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm like always manipulating the slider. And then that pitch I can go to anywhere. I got the most feel with this pitch. And then cutter. Cutter, I throw a little cutter too. It's like a little spike. It's almost like off my four seam. So my four seam... My four seams here, which you I try still to have do. that finger split there. You're just yeah. touching yeah. and then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I actually talked to Garrett Cole at the all-star game. He helped me, man, a lot with my four seam. Um, he's got actually tiny hands. He's got smaller hands than I do. And the big thing he told me about his four seam, which was great, man, because like my four seam, like I kind of lost it. I lost the feel for it. And he told me like he throws it with his fingers together. His actually stay together. Mine just naturally don't do that. So I don't try to force it, but he throws his with his fingers literally together. And he said, what he's trying to do is when he releases the ball, which I understand, and I'm trying to get to that point, this is where I'm getting pretty good. When he releases the ball, he wants to release the ball off both fingers at the same time, which is hard to do because our fingers are longer. So like, it made a lot of sense to me when I was talking to him. And it also made me like play with the ball. When I, when I slightly torque the ball a little bit, when I don't hold it, when I torque it, it allows me more room to kind of really get it off both fingertips rather than it coming off one. So he told me that, man, that was like eye opening. I was like, and he had tiny hands. So I was like, he puts his hands literally together. He's got it here. And he's like, Stro, you got to find it somewhere on the ball, what's comfortable for you, where you can release it so that the ball's not only coming off your middle finger on release, it's it's essentially coming off both fingers, which makes sense. You're putting more power. You're, you're getting another finger behind the ball, where, whereas you're, rather than releasing it like this, you're now releasing it too. So I've been Is trying- getting more spin? Yeah, man. Like I'm getting more spin for sure. And I'm getting starting to get like a little like- Starting to get that little, that, that, that vert, man. Like I'm trying to like, I guess JV, I think Verlander's, I think like super elite when it comes, I think he gets to like 20. I think he gets like close to like 20 inches yep. on his man. And I've been throwing something like 18, 19. So like I said, I don't want to become a four seam. That's not me, but it's definitely a weapon, man. And I just have to, I have to learn how to use it. You know, I've talked to the driveline guys about this, but there's something to be said about a shorter pitcher throwing a, a four seam with a lot of spin keeping it above barrels. And it's funny you said that too. Me and my trainer actually like, we've been like tinkering a little bit because I'm very firm in my backside on, on like my backside on my right leg. When I pitch like very, very 
stable and strong. And I keep a slight knee flexion, which is like the athletic position. But I've actually been talking to her recently about possibly, because I feel so strong in my legs and my single squat. I've actually talked to her about possibly, which, which hitters won't be able to tell, squatting down slightly more on my back leg when I throw a four seamer to essentially throw uphill rather than to feel like I'm throwing downhill. So it would be like a little variation. Like I said, the hitter's not going to be able to tell, but instead of having my leg essentially where it's like this, my leg squat will bend now to where I'm actually lowering myself a bit and I'm throwing upward plane. Whereas being here kind of throwing down my sinker, I'll be here and I'll be shoo. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so, I mean, so think about it. That's right. When you mm -hmm. think about what everybody's been told, taller pitchers, downward plane, but if you have a four seam and you're getting some hop on it, do you necessarily want that? Or would you want to be what you do? Right, exactly. Exactly. So I think like, I think if I can, I'm going to, I'm going to actually, it's like literally, I wrote it down. It's like an emphasis for my next uh, bullpen. But yeah, I think I could, because now if I'm on this plane and my shit comes sinker, sinker, slider. Now, if I change my plane, which they can't see from the plate and just with that slight right. And like I said, I focus on like single leg pistol squats so much. Like if I change this plane now to where they don't see it, but I'm changing the eye level for them. And now I'm shooting the four seamer up there. So I, I think it could be I think it could be big. Man. Well, I, and, and I think to the folks at home. You're you work on balance. You work on all like this the the uh, the messing with timing type thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean a lot of people want to do it, but you work on it. Like that's you. Yeah. Wait till you see some of the ones I got this year, man. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I got some good ones, man. Like I'm, I I I've honestly like as I get older, man. Like I'm getting more stable, so much more stable, so much more strong. So as you get more stable and more strong, it just allows you to do so much more in my delivery, man. Like I have a few slow motion timings, bro, that are going to fuck with some guys, man. I'm, ex I'm excited. <laughs> so how do you come, like, do you just come up with it in your head? Like you're just doing this, just being an athlete and coming up with different ways to screw with people. Do you do it on the fly? Sometimes you're seeing a hitter, not, you know, timing you different ways. All on the fly, man, all on the fly. And then also sometimes just random because it never hurts. So um, if I know a guy's got like a glaring leg kick or is a glaring timing guy, like I'll try to expose him, but I'll also just do it to the guy that doesn't even have a leg kick. Because like I said, n everybody wants to be in rhythm when they're hitters. So anytime I could take them slightly out of rhythm in any particular way, I'm going to do it. And like I said, this slow motion one that I have in the beginning of my leg lift, but then I have another one also too on my entry leg lifts. I think that it, this will help a lot, man, to getting guys on their front foot, like, that's all I'm trying to do, man. I want you to get on your front foot. I want to get your hands a little static. Like, I want to get you uncomfortable. So, I, and I don't understand why pitchers don't understand, like fans or pitchers or coaches don't understand that because you're hundred percent right. Hitting is a, a pitching is about upsetting the hitters timing. You can do it through changing speeds or you can do it through changing your mechanics in the mm -hmm. middle of it so that you mess with a hitter. Why isn't that part of your arsenal? Exactly, man. And like you said, um, to be honest with you, when I was a rookie in the league, Jose Bautista, like I tell the story a lot, but he was the reason why I started my time. My first start in the big leagues, Bautista is like on a mental wave, similar to me. He's always looking at the next possible thing to increase your body, increase your mental, um, just to whatever it is to increase your quality of life. So I'm sitting in my first start in the big leagues. And Bautista, we're up like 6-1 against the Royals. Bautista comes to me, sits down to me. He's like, Stro, he's like, you're pitching pretty well. First start. He's like, you're pitching pretty well. Like, we're cruising, we're up. He's like, why don't you try to mess with timing? Why don't you try to mess with like your deliveries? Like he said to me, he goes, the only time I'm, the only time a, a pitcher can get me out or out of whack or off balance or out of rhythm is when they quick pitch, when they, when they mess with their delivery, which like Cueto would do at the time a little bit, but it was, his was more like quirky, not really like messing with timing. He was just like messing with his delivery more so. So Bautista told me that my first start and like kind of implanted that in my head. And then as time progressed, like honestly, early in my career in 2014, I wasn't stable enough. I wasn't strong enough. I couldn't, I couldn't do what I do now in my delivery. Um, but as it progressed, I would sit in the cage. I had so many, I, I'm, I'm someone who honestly, I'll go sit behind DeGrom, but I, I, I rarely pick pitchers' minds. DeGrom's a goat. I'm usually with hitters, man. I go and sit in the hitters' cage. So I would go when I was with the Blue Jays and sit in there with Tulowitzki. Donaldson, Bautista, Encarnacion, Reyes, Melky Cabrera, 
I mean, I'm missing a ton of guys, but I had some legends to talk to. And all of them, man, all of them say that timing was the biggest thing. Quick pitch. When a guy messed with his rhythm, they literally said, Stro, they're like, it don't matter what pitch comes sometimes. They're like, it could be a slider, a heater, a changeup. It could be nasty. They're like, if I'm on time and it's in the zone, I'm smashing it. Like, so that made me think, I'm like, all right. So even if I throw a six slider sometimes, like, you're still going to smash it? Like, <laughs> that made me think these are the best hitters, some are arguably the best hitters in the world that I was talking to. And that just planted that in my head. Like, why are pitchers so cookie cutter? Like, we're robots. Like, <clears throat> Hit pitchers are essentially this is pitchers are so robots that hitters and pitchers are essentially doing a dance like a, a hitter can close their eyes and know when a pitcher is going to deliver the ball that's insane that you're on that time nick castellanos came up to me after a game and said this to me he's like stro he's like you're unreal man he goes you know why you're great he goes every other pitcher in the league this is what he said he goes every other pitcher in the league he goes they're the best dance partner He's like, I'm in rhythm with them. We're moving in sync. He's like, in between pitches, they take the same amount of time. Their delivery, it's the same. He's like, it's a dance, bro. He's like, I'm in rhythm. He's like, when I'm in rhythm, I'm a, I'm a rake. He goes, you're the worst dance partner. That's what he said to me. He goes, he put, he put it perfect. He put it perfect. This is Castellanos, who's a great, one of the best hitters in the league. He goes, you are the worst dance partner. He's like, I'm so out of rhythm. And I just feel like we're not moving in sync. And that's what opened my mind a lot, too. When he came to me and told me that, I was like, wow. Just the way he worded it, like being the worst dance partner, like the way he worded that was like, yes, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to be the worst dance partner with you. <laughs> Go back because there are tweets where I actually said that. I said, be a bad dance partner. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly it. But most pitchers are like, because it's preached from a young age, you got to get on the mound and do the same thing. You got to have the same mechanics. You got to have the same fluidity. You got to have the same thing. It's like we're almost we're almost we're we're we're, we're creatures of habit, and and the habit that we're creating is not a good one. That's gonna help us get out. You know what I mean? It's actually working against us. Like, because then essentially what you're doing is saying that you need to outstuff the guy. So then it's it's your stuff needs to outstuff the best, and essentially you're not gonna throw a perfect low perfectly located pitch every single time that's just not that's just not ideal so what i tell guys is like why not give yourself more room for error that's what i tell people i'm like i'm giving myself more room for error sometimes when i do my timing i throw that shit right down the middle i tell people i don't even try to locate it i know that his front foot i know that he's on his front foot i know his timing's off i know it's probably gonna be a bad swing i'll throw it right down the middle i'll throw my sinker middle middle throw whatever middle middle because i know that you're not in rhythm your foot's not down on time your hands pumped maybe four times instead of three times like you're used to so i'm okay i'm okay with throwing a pitch like that when you're like that you know what it reminds me of you remember the the, the revolutionary war where you have the british lined up in a row and they're fighting like this and then yeah. the americans are like hiding behind trees and yeah, stuff like like stage. yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. what's wrong with that? Like, in the NFL, quarterbacks don't sit there and do the same thing every time because they got someone coming at them, and they're on target. So you can do exactly. it. Exactly, man, 100%. Like, I think as it starts to get a whole – hopefully that incorporates more. I hope pitchers start to incorporate more of the weight room and stability and focusing on core because they don't understand how much that helps them in the long run, in their delivery. Like, yeah, everyone wants to go work on pitches, but at the end of the day, you can't – working on too much pitching works against you reps and arm. Like you only get so many bullets, you know what I mean? In your arms. So you want to save those for the game. Truly. That's another conversation. I used to have a price about like, you want to save your body and as much bullets as possible. Yeah. It's great to go throw 30 sliders in a bullpen, but you're probably setting the longevity of your career back a few starts. So um, I put a priority on my body, man, priority on body, shoulder, mind always. And then, like I said, everything comes after that. Well, I haven't seen any of your balancing this year where you're like walking on your hands and putting a wine glass on your back Ooh, I've been, and shit like that. I'm ready. I've just been kind of, I've just been kind of chill and I've just haven't been posting. You know, I, I, I just want to like really show it on the field this year, man. I'm excited. So I'm excited here. Well, I'm excited to, to watch you this season. I'm excited for the Mets. Eh? Let, let's go Mets. How about that? Let, let's fucking crush it. Let's fucking go Mets. <laughs> Can't wait. It's going to be exciting times in Queens, man, for sure.